Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is one that I have received endless requests to cover. So today we are going to be having a look at display interfaces. That means VGA, DVI, HDMI, DisplayPort, all these different standards and cables and which ones can be adapted to the others and what's the difference in terms of image quality and performance. So stay tuned. We're going to finally cover all that stuff once and for all. So let's start with what I consider basically a history lesson at this point. This is VGA, all right, right here. And even though it does come standard on almost all modern monitors as well as video cards, it is something that even though you can use, I pretty much tell you, and if you watch my video blog, you know this, you shouldn't use it. It's terrible. The reasons for this are the following. First of all, it is an analog signal, which means that the quality of the cable makes an enormous difference in terms of the image quality you're going to get at the other end of the connection. Most VGA cables these days are not good quality because who runs out and buys a high quality cable for an aging standard? Well, not very many people. So that is why I do not recommend using it. It is also not capable of as high resolutions as dual link DVI, HDMI, as well as DisplayPort, and it's just plain old. Not to mention that even though some older monitors used to demonstrate similar image quality between VGA and DVI, you got to remember, as a standard gets faded out, faded out, phased out, it becomes less important. So what that means is that the scalers, because remember, the panel is not analog, that's a digital panel in your LCD TV, the panel, so the scalers that convert this signal, this VGA signal into a digital signal, have become lower quality because nobody uses VGA anymore. Back when you didn't have DVI video cards all over the place, they had to really put in a high quality VGA converter so that you wouldn't get lousy image quality on your brand new LCD monitor. Now it doesn't matter. In terms of compatibility, you can actually convert DVI to VGA quite easily. And the reason for that is not because you can convert a DVI, a digital signal, into an analog signal. No. The reason is that the DVI standard actually contains the necessary analog pins for a VGA output on most video cards on the market. So you just use one of these little adapters. Now let's talk about DVI. I'm a big fan of DVI because it is just way better than VGA and around the time VGA was being sort of phased out and DVI came along it was like a breath of fresh air because it's a pure digital signal we're using digital displays now so there's a lot less conversion back and forth hoo-ha that goes on which means you get well just plain better image quality it also means with modern LCDs that you're going to get a completely native input for digital and then a completely native output to the display. Once again, less hoo-ha. It also means that you're going to not have to fuss about with buying high quality cables because over a short distance, the reality of it is a zero or a one sounds exactly the same to the receiving end as a zero or a one no matter how muffled or gobbled it is. So unless you're running a long distance and you plug in your DVI cable and you get a completely black screen, it means that you're getting the optimal image quality, or if you get like black screens once in a while, then you're probably borderline. So if you are running a distance, make sure you buy a high quality DVI cable. One of the other things I love about DVI is how easily it converts to other standards. So the cable I'm holding right now is just a straight DVI to HDMI cable. Yes, it's that simple. They both have 19 pins. They are the same signal. So if you're going to plug a DVI, say for example, video card into the back of your HDMI HDTV, well, you win because all you have to buy is a couple dollar cable instead of an expensive converter. It also converts effortlessly, and I left this on the floor, to VGA. Not because you can convert a digital signal to an analog signal, but because the DVI standard actually also contains the necessary connections in here for an analog signal. So it's just a matter of throwing that on there so you can take DVI to VGA and DVI to HDMI effortlessly. There are actually a couple more stipulations about DVI that I didn't mention. The one I'm holding right here is actually a single link DVI connection. So that means you see the missing pins. Those would be there if we had a dual link DVI cable. So what dual link allows us to do is go from a maximum resolution of 1920 by 1200 at 60 hertz up to either 2560 by 1600 resolution, which is really big, 30 inch monitors use that at 60 hertz, or we can do 1920 by 1200 at 120 hertz for 3D gaming support. So here's our HDMI cable as well as the connector on the back of the video card. There's not a whole lot 
to really say about HDMI because the reality of it is it's basically like a smaller DVI. Now HDMI has seen a number of different revisions and while it is a standard so to speak there's you know 1.0, 1.1, now we're up to 1.4a which is capable of 3D output from 3D ready Blu-ray players to 3D ready TVs all that kind of good stuff. So HDMI is not really a PC standard although some PC monitors do use it and some PC video cards as you can clearly see do use it. It's mostly for home theater and multimedia but the signal is, as I mentioned before, identical to DVI. Now let's talk about DisplayPort. DisplayPort is the newest of the standards that we've looked at today. And what's really cool about DisplayPort is that it is completely royalty free. So it costs the manufacturers nothing to implement a DisplayPort connection, which is great. So you can see I plug that in. DisplayPort also comes with a lock that isn't as uh, horrible to use as the screws on VGA and DVI and isn't as insecure as the completely non-locking HDMI. So that's another cool thing about it. Now the disadvantage that we're running into with DisplayPort right now is that it's not signal compatible with anything else. So with DVI we were able to use cheapo adapters to go from one standard to another just like that. Whereas with DisplayPort, well, we're kind of stuck. So this is what's called an active DisplayPort adapter. And this is basically like putting an interpreter between two people who speak completely different languages. So where DVI and HDMI are speaking the same language, but just, you know, maybe a slightly different dialect, so you need a different connector. This box right here is actually powered by USB, and then it has a DisplayPort connection on the one end. This is actually mini DisplayPort, more on that in a second. So it has DisplayPort on the one end, and then it also has DVI on the other end. So that's how we're able to adapt DisplayPort to something else. Now, DisplayPort versus Mini DisplayPort, what is the difference? Well, Mini DisplayPort is just a lot smaller. So Mini DisplayPort is very useful for, say, for example, a video card where you wanted to have six outputs. There you go. Use Mini DisplayPort. Now you can do six video outputs and still have enough room for air exhaust out the back of the video card. So I hope you have enjoyed our episode on DisplayPort, VGA, DVI, HDMI, all of this important stuff that, you know, nobody really sort of cares about, but everybody needs to know, and all the ways that they link together. Thank you for watching NCIX Tech Tips, and I do have a question for you at the end of this episode. I want to know which standard you are using to connect your computer to your monitor right now, and after seeing this video, are you planning to change it? Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips.